Uh, thank you. Those are two hard acts to follow. I, I guess when I was first thinking about this, I was, I was thinking about it maybe from a little bit, um, a little bit different angle, probably more from uh, the side that I uh, tend to work on. And those of you who don't know me, um, I, I, I've worked in companies from startup to Fortune 500, one of the largest banks in the world, and more recently, I've sort of gained a passion around the Green Line Central Corridor and, and chaired a group called the Business Resources Collaborative that uh, coordinated a lot of the efforts around helping the businesses along the corridor survive. Um, and our plan was really prepare, survive, thrive. And so we're now in this sort of third phase of that work, which is how do, what do we do to think about the corridor, the Green Line, and how do we make that, uh, that part of our community thrive? And so I, you know, I, it's interesting. I, I just tell people, you know, when you were uh, early in my career, which doesn't seem like that long ago, you know, I had an opportunity to probably work and uh, do transaction deals in 20, 25 uh, countries around the world. I used to have people that worked for me in four different continents. And so there are often times when you come and you're thinking about the community you physically live in, and you really don't spend that much time actually thinking about what's going on because you're going to work, you're spending as much time going to the airport as you are uh, you know, running and, and, and visiting in, in community groups. The last five or six years in getting involved in this community uh, has really, for me, opened my eyes up around some, some of the challenges that are, I think, in, in many ways unique to, uh, to Minneapolis in some regards, and, and in many ways um, hopefully we can borrow from some of the thoughts from, that maybe we've seen from other uh, countries and also from uh, sort of a large corporate environment. But, you know, I, I come at this from a little bit different way. I think unless we can really start to f figure out how to create a meaningful number of new good-paying jobs, we're really going to struggle uh, at, at lifting the chances for most people. And I think we, as a nation, if you look at most of the data trends, over the last 30 years, uh, we've really had a middle class that's been flat to declining in real wage terms, and we've had a rising uh, group of people that are in lower income. And I think unless we really sort of start to address that issue, because you know, a good majority of our population uh, that are diverse are in those two segments, so unless we can start really starting to get good middle class wages increasing, finding a way to bring those jobs back to this community, we're going to be really in, in a challenging situation. I think so. That, I really think that is step number one, is how do we bring those jobs back to this community? And as we're bringing those jobs back, how do cre we create the pipelines into the communities along Central Corridor and other communities that are diverse to be filling those jobs? And how do we create the opportunities for those individuals who are in those communities to have sort of a first opportunity and a pathway to those jobs? And that's some of the work that we've, we've started to think about along the Green Line as sort of, a, in essence, as a pilot project. Actually, Mayor Ryback um, uh, shared the idea that I I'd shared with him at one of his um, events with the Minneapolis Chamber. Um, so it kind of put me on the spot to really be thinking even more broadly about it. But our goal was, was to create about 14,000 living wage jobs from Capitol to campus with really a focus on uh, many of those jobs being filled by people who live in the corridor and having a much more diverse population of, of people filling those jobs. Second, I think, is, is really, you know, we've hired, we own a Dairy Queen. Uh, we hire a lot of part-time people. We've had it for 10 years. I would say we probably hired about 250 people or so over the last 10 years. Uh, I, you know, make a conscious effort of, of trying to hire more, a uh, more diverse um, employee base probably than even applies. We're on the University of Minnesota campus, so our, our application pool is maybe not as, as diverse as others. And, you know, one of the things that I start to realize is that I think for some people, we need to understand what j the job is. So at, at our Dairy Queen, for example, if you're not there when you're scheduled to be there, that creates an issue, right? Because if, if we have three people don't show up for lunch and we have 100 customers waiting to be served, that's a bad business decision for us. Our other company, we have graphic designers and other folks, and you know if they come in 10 minutes late, half an hour late, an hour late, but stay an hour later at the end of the day, that's just fine. So I think some of the pieces that we need to think about are 
what are the jobs that fit the type of people that we have, right? So one of, I used to work at a company in town called ADC Telecommunications. We were a, a large Fortune 500 technology company. And as I described to people, when we think about, maybe as we're thinking about the job creation side of things, is how do we start thinking about creating jobs and attracting companies that fit the assets we have? And that is the human assets that we have. And so many business people have really figured out very, very well over the last 10, 15, 20 years how to make money. And I think we do all do probably a fairly good job of that. In particular, we've shifted from building stuff to moving money around to make, make more and more money. And I think, but I do think there are a lot of people, given the right opportunity, the right resources, the right championing, that we could encourage them to use that same brain power to be thinking about how do we take the physical and the human assets that we have today and make great companies again like we used to have 20, 30, 40 years ago that employed a lot of people in our communities and were really built around those very assets that we are trying to fill and employ and provide jobs for. Some of those jobs might be jobs that fit great for disabled people. Some of those jobs might be great for people that need a flexible work schedule. But if we think about that as we're creating the business model, as opposed to trying to shoehorn those people into an existing business model that already has a lot of people that are already working there, we might be more successful in thinking about how do we keep those people both, giving them an opportunity to get employed, but then afterwards have a greater opportunity to stay employed. Um, finally, I just, I, I think it's one of the things I, you know, I, I, was, I also have the, the, the great pleasure of serving on the Quarters of Opportunity Policy Board. And we were in Chicago uh, a couple months ago talking about uh, working on, on eliminating the disparity gap and thinking about creating jobs and how important that is. And one of the concepts that um, I developed a while ago that I shared with the group is sort of a, a term that I've, I've coined Fergonomics because I can't think of anything better to call it. But I really think that what we're talking about is somewhat of a, a bit of a virtuous circle, which is I think there's really four components to our long-term success. And one is, the first is people. And I think it, we really need to educate people, make sure that people are ready for the jobs that they have, you know, that they stay in school, um, they, they're, they're interested in working. Two is families. I think without good, strong family units, it's very difficult to keep a lot of the kids motivated and not have good role models, um, have fathers in the, in the household. Um, three is the community. And I think the stronger the family unit, and, the, and the, the more people are committed to the, to the communities that they live in, that builds stronger communities. And quite honestly, strong communities is what attracts great companies and companies that are going to hire folks. And if those companies in turn, because they're in these great communities, are committed to hiring those people, then those people have jobs. And generally speaking, people that have jobs, I know in our household, when money's tight, we have more fights, right? So generally people that have jobs that, that are employed it makes having a strong family much, much easier. And when you have strong families, you have better communities. When you have better communities, you attract more companies and you create more jobs. And so I think when you start breaking any one of those cycles, if you don't have the right people to, for companies to employ, they don't want to be there. If you don't have the right people, then families start falling apart. If you don't have good families, you don't have a good community, you can't attract those companies. So I think for us as a community, we think about how our community is changing from a, from a diversity perspective. I think we really need to think about all four aspects of that circle and think about how can we help in any one of those areas. Because if any one of them is broken, if we don't have jobs, it's very difficult to have people to have the income to keep families together. But if we also don't have the other aspects of that, I think it's very difficult for us to take this community to the next level that it should be and the aspirational levels that uh, Mayor Ryback and Mayor, uh, former Mayor Ryback and, and Mayor Hodges and, and Mayor Coleman have talked about as we think about trying to end some of these disparity gaps and think about moving ourselves to the next level. So um, we will be doing lots of work around job creation. Um, the community, I think, will be uh, hopefully very, very engaged in that and in, in thinking about how we can think about that equation in a much, much different way than we have in the past. So. With that, I'll turn it back over. I don't know if there's